Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Something that men have been pondering since the dim beginnings of time has been the question of poverty and riches. Why are some men destined to be wealthy while others seem fated to be poor? Since it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom, we may safely assume that the poor shall find greater favor in heaven. However, to make up for it, obviously, the rich have things much better here on earth. Our mystery drama, The Paradise of the Devil, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are those people who will always make money, whether times are good or times are bad. Whatever they touch always seems to turn to gold. On the other hand, we have those people whose timing is always disastrous. Nothing works. Whatever they touch shrinks and shrivels, declines and dwindles. However, there are always exceptions, which is why we have stories. Let us begin ours in a warehouse. A large public warehouse where many types of merchandise are stored. Everything from food to textiles to appliances to building materials. We are in a remote corner of this huge cavernous compound. And we hear steps approaching. Who is it? Why, the night watchman, of course. His name is Bert Ledoux. He's a very pleasant man in his 60s. But we shall not get to know him well. He is about to be killed. Waiting for him and hiding behind a huge stack of cement bags are three men. Here he comes now. Let him turn the corner and give it to him. Ready, Lewis? Now. <laughs> very good. Very good, Lewis. You popped him right between the eyes. <laughs> You get better every time. Let's get out of here. Yes, miss? You don't remember me, Sergeant? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, should I? I suppose this tells me everything I need to know. Look, miss, can we help you? I'm Mr. LeDieu's daughter, Louise. LeDieu? You don't even remember his name, and it's only been a week. Oh, I remember. Bert LeDieu. You said to come back in a few days. You might have news for me. Louise, let me talk to you off the record. About what? The facts of life. Thank you, Sergeant, but I know them. Oh, no, you don't. What I'm going to tell you could cost me my job. Then why risk it? Because you're old enough to be my own daughter. Your dad was killed exactly ten days ago. Do you know how many people have been murdered since? No, and I'm not interested. Five. And that's about average. A killing every other day. And my father's killing is rapidly becoming ancient history. Your father was shot by burglars in the warehouse. We have no leads. What have you done? We combed the neighborhood. No one saw. No one heard anything unusual. But surely, there must be something. Believe me, I wish with all my heart it was the kind of thing you see in the movies. A clue is left that leads us directly to the killer and we capture him in one big blazing shootout. Sergeant, all of this is beside the point. It is the point. What have we got? All we know is your father was killed by a thirty-eight caliber bullet. We have absolutely nothing else. Which means you're doing nothing. Oh, no. We're doing two things. Each time we capture an armed criminal, we check the weapon. And we keep tapping our usual sources of information in the underworld. Uh, stool pigeons, you'd call them. And that's all? What else would you suggest? What would I suggest? Am I a professional police officer? I'm sorry, Louise. Sergeant, just tell me this. If my father had been somebody wealthy and powerful, would things be different? Let me answer it this way, Louise. It's always better to be rich than it is to be poor. Well, what would you be doing right now if he'd been rich? It's not so much what we'd be doing. It's what you'd be doing. And what would I be doing? Well, it's like everything else. If you don't care for the services the city supplies free of charge, you go out and buy your own. You mean 
I'd hire a private investigator? Oh, an army of them. What? Tell me the name of a good private investigator. I'm not allowed to. Then why did you bring it up? But a private detective will give you no guarantee. I wouldn't even know how to go about it. Tell me the name of, of someone who wouldn't just waste my money. But it's against regulation. If you were in my place, who would you go to? I promise you, Sergeant, no one will ever know. Well, if the police haven't been able to get me where Miss Ledoux, what makes you think I can do any better? Well, because... Because you think I'm smarter? I'm not. The police have the whole city to worry about. Well, well I you... have other cases, too, Miss Ledoux. Oh, but at least you would... I, I would what? Well, take a personal interest in the case. Mm-hmm. Miss Ledoux, there are hundreds of killings, just like your father's. Random killings. Killings where there's no leads at all. Where the killers have vanished without a trace. Are you telling me that I must accept the fact that my father's murderer may never be caught? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. If the killer is ever caught, it'll be because he was betrayed by a pal or a woman or arrested for another crime. We can't make those things happen. We have to wait for them. For how long? Well, sometimes forever. In... In other words, you won't accept the case. And, uh, then we have the question of money. Now, your father worked as a night watchman. He wasn't a rich man. And, uh, what do you do? I'm a secretary. Ah. Uh, do you have any money? Oh, a few hundred dollars in the bank. Well, I get $95 a day in expenses. How much of my time can you afford? H how much do I need? Weeks, maybe months. How can I answer? Mr. Colby... Are you familiar with the details of my father's murder? Well, I remember reading in the paper that a night watchman was killed, but that's all I know. W will you do something for me? Huh? Go down to the warehouse. Why? W do whatever you, you have to do to, to acquaint yourself with what happened. Why? Uh, are you allowed to talk to the police? Of course. Well, find out everything there is to know. And after you do that, if you're convinced there's nothing more to be done, well... That's the way it'll have to be, but but if you feel there's something there, anything at all, I'll raise the money to pay your fee. How? I said I would raise it. Who? George Colby? Oh, yeah, yeah, send him in. Hey, Georgie. Hi, Sarge. How's private practice? Sarge, I didn't know when I was well off getting paid every week. Did you send me that little Louise Ledoux? Yeah, because I know you're an honest guy, and I figured you'd discourage her. You will, won't you? Well, I should. You mean you won't? Well, there's a little angle on this case that bothers me. Yeah? Yeah, I don't believe the old man was shot by hoods who were knocking off the warehouse. Why not? Because of where it happened, Sarge. He was killed in the wrong part of the warehouse. Well, why do you say the wrong part? Is there a right part for a watchman to get killed? Yeah, there is in this one. Where should he have been killed? Way over on the other side, Sarge. Where they got the stuff the crooks are after. TV sets, tape recorders, cameras, hi-fis, liquor, guns, cigarettes. But where's Ledoux killed? In an area where there's nothing but hundred-pound bags of cement. Well, they may have wanted him out of the way. Now, nah, Sarge, this is a clean, professional job. No crook is going to run the risk of murder if he doesn't have to. They were waiting for him. No sign of a fight. They could have tapped him on the head and put him to sleep, but no. Oh, no, no. They were out to kill him. Why would anyone want to kill a night watchman? Well, maybe he was more than a night watchman. We checked the daughter. She said he had absolutely no enemies. That she knows of. But why? Why would anyone deliberately kill my father? He was the nicest. Sweetest yeah, I know, I know. To you, he was the nicest, sweetest guy in all the world. Other people may have held a different opinion. Well, talk to his friends. Talk to anyone who knew him. Tell me, uh, had he seemed worried or unhappy? Well, not at all. Actually, it was the other way around. He was quite happy. As a matter of fact, now that you mention it, unusually happy. He kept saying to me, My dear daughter... There is a law of retribution. Many a villain has been hoist on his own petard. His own petard? Your, your father was an educated man? Yes. He'd been in business, but he lost everything. Oh. 
The watchman's job was the only thing he could get. But he was glad. He said it gave him time to think. Uh-huh. And you say he was unusually happy just before he died? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes it so hard for me to understand why he was deliberately murdered. Oh, I'm not saying he was deliberately murdered, Miss Ledoux. I'm saying I have strong reasons to suspect it. Well, what do you suggest is the next move? Well, you asked me to look into your father's murder, and I did. I don't think it's what it appears to be on the surface. On the other hand, you're not a wealthy girl. Your money could be down the drain. Well, suppose I could raise $10,000. Well, I still couldn't guarantee results. I couldn't pay immediately. I would have to wait for my father's estate to be settled. His estate? I thought he didn't have any money. Well, this is a piece of property. The only thing he left. I've already received an offer for it. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I might go through every nickel and we'd be no wiser than we are now. I could be wrong. Mr. Colby, I'm sure you're an extremely ethical person. But isn't it possible for you to talk positively? Miss Ledoux, I don't talk positively and I don't talk negatively. I try to talk truthfully. Ah, Miss Ledoux, please come in. Have a seat. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. I read about your father's death. Please accept my deepest sympathy. You're very kind. Now, Miss Ledoux, how may I be of service? Well, you called on me some months ago. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I had the mistaken impression it was your father's address. The land title is in the name of L. Ledoux. That was my father's name, Liebert Ledoux. And yours is Louise, and each of you is listed in the phone book as L. Ledoux. Oh, I would have been willing to sell you the land, but of course it wasn't mine. I thought Dad would be happy to get rid of it, but... Yes, you would think so. Ten thousand dollars is a very generous offer. Does that offer still stand, Mr. Hawkins? Well, yes, of course. There are some legal matters to be cleared. The will has to be probated, but I would like to be sure. You see, I need that money. I know, I know. There are so many expenses involved in these unfortunate matters... I'm willing to draw up an agreement to buy the land for $10,000 contingent upon your receiving title. Thank you, sir. And if you're pressed for cash, I'd be happy to advance it. Oh, thank you. You're extremely generous, but he said he could wait. He? Uh, Do you mean you owe someone $10,000? You're that deeply in debt? No, but I could be. I've hired a private detective to find my father's murderer. I can think of no better way to spend the money. I see. Well, I hope he's successful. I'm sure he will be. I have a great deal of confidence in this man. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Hawkins. It's been my pleasure. Goodbye. And you'll hear from me soon. Good day. Richie? Yeah, yeah, it's Richie. You promised me a clean job on Bert Ledoux. And I gave you one. No, you didn't. You must have left a few spots somewhere. You may have to clean it up again. They say cleanliness is next to godliness. But obviously, some of the devil's disciples are in favor of it also. At any rate, as our friends in the sports world would put it, We have given you the matchups. It's Louise Ledoux and George Colby against Mr. Hawkins and Richie. Richie and Hawkins have already scored. But this game has only begun. There is more action when I return with Act Two. Why would anyone want to kill a night watchman? the obvious answer, to rob the building the man has been hired to watch. All too often, the usual answer is usually the correct answer. But Liebert Ledoux, evidently, was not your usual night watchman. For one thing, he has a most unusual daughter. She is willing to spend her entire inheritance, if that's what it takes, 
to find her father's killer. But why do you have to look through all these papers? Miss Ledoux, if the police theory is correct and your father was killed by hoodlums who were out to rob the warehouse, then I have no business in this case. But if there was another motive, I have to look for it somewhere. Do you realize how much there is to go through? Why, there are cartons of old letters and documents and receipts and, and even poetry and short stories. He used to write those in his spare time. Mm. Is this all there is? Oh! Do you realize it can take you a week to look through everything in this room? Probably. A week at $95 a day? Is this all there is? Um, yes. Is this all you're going to do? Just look through this junk? Well, where else can I look? I have to work with what I've got. But what are you looking for? I really don't know. Well, then how uh, can look, you... look, Miss Ledoux, this is not an exact science. And if you think I'm wasting your money... I I'll... didn't say that. In addition, I want a list of all his friends. But he had hundreds of friends. Oh, nobody has hundreds of friends. Well, he knew a lot of people. Well, we'll begin with those who are closest. Who's his best friend? Well, I guess you'd have to say it was Sid. Sidney Grossman. Grossman. Where can I find him? You can't. Sid's dead. Well, then why did you mention his name? He was only killed three weeks ago. Killed? Why? How? Does it matter? All right, tell me about Sid Grossman. He and Dad had a club. They called it the Underachievers Association. Why? Well, because they were both college-educated men, and neither of them ever lived up to his potential. Mr. Grossman had a civil engineering degree. He was a geologist, but he could never hold a job. Why not? He thought the object of life was to have fun. So did my dad. Work interfered with pleasure. Pleasure was the opera, ball games, fishing. So both of them took jobs which made no demands on them and left them free. I see. And Mr. Grossman was killed, huh? How did it happen? Well, I suppose he was mugged. It was very late at night, but they caught the mugger. Oh, they did, huh? Maybe that's why Dad was talking about retribution. Now, look, Sarge, two friends. Each dies violently within a three-week period. Coincidence? We got the one who killed Grossman. Just a punk. He's got a record for assault and robbery. There is such a thing as coincidence. Yeah, I know. How, how do you know you got the right guy? He took Grossman's watch, ring, and wallet. He brought him to a small timer named Legs Barry. And Legs tries to be a fence. But Legs need a little favor from us. And you know how these things go. Yeah, I know, I know. I also know these punks had framed their own mothers if they had to. Except Legs had the merchandise for us. A Grossman's watch, wallet, and ring. He says he bought him from this hood, this Pete Lucas. Do you think Legs is telling the truth? Well, why would he lie? I'm being framed. Oh, sure, sure. You're a fine, upright example of red-blooded American manhood, and the police are trying to railroad you. Look, you want to tell them corny jokes? Go into show business. Ah, uh, I'm a bum. I never was nothing else. I can't even remember how many people I robbed. And maybe you don't remember robbing Grossman. That one I remember, because that one I didn't do. And you can believe it. Stupid fudge. They don't get me for all the ones I knocked off, but for the yeah, one that I yeah, didn't... Yeah, 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 life is funny that way, Peter. Tell me, if it wasn't you, how come you fenced off his watch, ring, and wallet? I didn't fence him. This stoolie, this rat legs, Barry, he says I fenced him. Now, why would he lie? Well, he got his girl on the drug charge. He's making a trade. Mm -hmm. How come he's got the dead man's possessions? Because the mug who done it fenced the stuff with him. Well, why not turn that guy in? Because, because... How would I know? Well, whoever did it could only have been some punk. Now, why would Legs risk a perjury rap? Don't ask me what's going on. I don't solve crimes. I only commit them. All right. Don't be flip with me, Pete. If you didn't do it, why's the finger on you? Look, I never killed nobody in all my life. Pete, you're not answering me. I want to know if you were fingered, why? Why? Okay, uh, maybe the guy was in mug. Maybe it was... Something else. Like what? Maybe they wanted to look like he was mugged, so that's where I come in. If you want to have everybody think it was robbery, then I'm the one who can make everybody happy. After all, don't I have the rep? Huh? Well, the jury takes one look at me and I'm up the river. You talk about they. Who are they? I don't know. I don't know. Huh? 
Ever hear of a man named Bert Ledoux? No. Is there anything buzzing in your circles about Ledoux and Grossman? No. Look, don't be stuck with that underworld code nonsense. What code? If I knew something, I'd sing like a cage full of canaries. I didn't do it. <laughs> words I said to Sid, the last words I said to him in this world, you're crazy. Those two words, you're crazy. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Grossman. But it's true, he was crazy. Only a crazy person would go out two o'clock in the morning, and he had just come back. You're back from where, Mrs. Grossman? Do I know? Did I ever know? Him and that crazy Bert Ledoux. They were a pair. Yeah, where had he come back from, Mrs. Grossman? Only the week before. They came to me. These two heroes, they came to me and said they needed $250 for Sid to take a trip out west. Where out west? I don't know. Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, wherever the west is. Why? They said that for my sake they were willing to become rich. And Sid had to investigate something. Oh, what? I don't know. One morning he leaves. One midnight he comes back. He says, Ida, Ida, we are rich. Well, why? How? Tell me, I said to him. And he says, you must not be bothered with details. Your only job will be to spend the money. With that, he puts on his coat. Where are you going, I ask? I got something to tell Bert. Now? Right now, he says. It cannot wait. You're crazy, I says to him. You're crazy, but he was out the door. Uh What was it he had to tell Bert? I don't know. All I know is the last words I said to him. I said, you're crazy. Did he uh, bring anything home with him from the trip? He brought me a box of candy and a flower. He always did that. But this time he was a little bit crazier than usual. In his suitcase, he had some rocks. What kind of rocks? Rocks. Some of them are just as big as an indoor baseball. Just plain, everyday, common, ordinary rocks. Could I see one? Sure. They're on the table. I keep them there next to his picture. Don't ask me why. Uh, could I borrow one of these? Why? What could it mean to you? It's just a rock. Well, Doc, what's the verdict? Well, if this rock belongs to you and uh, you've got a lot more like it, you are now eligible for membership in the Millionaire's Club. Is that so? If it's yours, you are fabulously wealthy. Wouldn't you know it, Doc? It isn't mine. Well, when you brought it down here to the office yesterday, I could tell just by looking that uh, there was a vein of pitch blend running through it, this uh, grayish-black area. Pitch blend? It's the most important source of uranium. Uranium? We've never encountered a higher grade of ore. And it's valuable? If there's enough of it, and from this sample, there has to be. It's about as good financially as striking oil. And in this case, perhaps better. Better? Where you have this kind of quality, you're also not too far from other minerals. Gold, silver, copper. I don't know where you found this, Georgie, but uh, I wish I owned a piece of it. Yeah, so do I, Doc. Well, thanks. Send me the bill. Huh? Oh, uh, if you're headed downtown, I'd appreciate a lift. I'm about ready to close, and uh, I don't have my car. Sure. <laughs> George, I always wondered, what makes a guy want to become a private detective? Oh, what makes a guy want to become a geologist? What are you looking at? You keep glancing into that rear view mirror. Uh, Somebody's coming up behind us. Well? I'm not sure, but I think I noticed that car before. He was parked just down the street from your office, Doc, and he's been following us ever since we left. Uh, aren't you going a little too fast? This is a pretty steep hill. There's something about that car. Look oh, that idiot. He, he wants to pass us. Look out. Oh, what, what's that not trying to do? He's going to run us off the road. Hold on, Doc. Uh, do these things a 
occur in series of threes. Mr. Grossman, Mr. Ledoux, and now Mr. George Colby and his companion. First, it's something designed to appear as a mugging. Then, an incident to be considered a holdup. And now, an automobile accident. These things do happen. But we know better. I shall return in just a few moments with Act Three. They were just two carefree elderly men. They owned little more than the clothes on their backs. Or did they? In less than a month, both were dead, seemingly victims of random violence. And as private investigator George Colby has learned, it is obviously dangerous to probe into their affairs. A mugging, a robbery, and now an auto accident. George! He's going to run us off the road. Hold tight. <laughs> Doctor, I think I'm... I think I'm okay. All right, take a breath. Try to move your arms and legs. Anything hurt? I think I'm okay. You're bleeding. Oh, I don't think it's bad. Can Can you move? Yeah, yeah. Okay, out of the car, quickly. Why? Why? Because. Because we have to burn it. Hello. Are you sure of him? Well, I seen the car. It had blown up, burning all over the place. Well, that's good. He ain't going to bother nobody. It's a clean job. George, what's all this? Hello, Sarge. <laughs> You should be in the hospital. No, no, no. It's not as bad as it looks. Well, why'd you have the highway cop call me? Why not an ambulance? Now, listen, Sarge. The Grossman thing was no mucky. The Ledoux killing was no holdup, and this... This was no accident. What are you talking about? We were forced off the road. Could you see by whom? No, it happened too fast. Now, look, Sarge, can you give it out that we were killed? I can't do that. Why not? Well, because Now, look, Sarge. Two men have already been murdered. Whoever was after them is after me. Let them think they're in the clear. Have you got a line on who the killer could be? No, not yet. But I know who to ask. But... But, but you're supposed to be dead. Well, you can see for yourself. It, were, it was on the news. Private investigator killed an accident along with noted geologist. Uh -huh. And what did you think when you heard that news, Louise? What did I think? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know what to think. I... I thought about you, and, and 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 I felt terrible. Did you stop to think that three people connected somehow with your father were now dead? Well, no. Well, you have a great deal to explain to me. Explain what? Well, number one, why didn't you tell me that Mr. Grossman was killed because he was on his way to see your father late that night? Because I didn't know that. Second, why didn't you tell me your father and Sid Grossman had planned for Mr. Grossman to take a trip? Because I didn't know that either. And why was I being set up? Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. Because you wanted me killed. I wanted you killed. You hired me to make it look good. And then when I started to come close... Well, I don't know what you're talking about. But who else but you knew I was working on this case? Think about that. Only two people knew. Sergeant Weller and you. I vouch for Weller. Now let's talk about you. But, How are you going to pay me for my work? I told you. I'm waiting for my father's will to be probated. You agree? Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's talk about your father's will. W what does that have to do with... Everything any... is tied to everything else. You said he owned property. Well, that's all he owned. Would it be out west? Yes, but it's worthless. You sure of that? Of course I'm sure. Now, how could you count on selling it to pay my fee? And where did you get the figure of $10,000? Because that's what I was offered for it. By whom? But... Somebody. You never smell a rat, do you? Will you please tell me what you're getting at? You say the property is worthless. 
Now, why should anybody be willing to buy it for $10,000? Well, that's nothing. $10,000 is nothing? It's only $10 an acre. Your father owned a thousand acres. Of what? Sand, rocks, hundreds of miles from nowhere. A thousand acres of, uh... Let's see, do you know how much money that land is worth? Well, it's just desert. It's got what could be the richest load of uranium in the world. There could also be gold, silver, copper. It's a treasure chest. <gasps> So, so that's why the man wanted to buy it. Which man? Oh, uh, let me think for a minute. Let me think. Mr. Colby, I, I know now who killed my father. Who? Who's the killer? I am. You? You went into that warehouse and fired the shot? No, killed... I didn't go there. I didn't hold the gun. I didn't pull the trigger. But it happened all because of me. Of course. And now I know why they tried to kill you, too. Mr. Colby, I am not the only one who, in addition to Sergeant Weller, knew you were on the case. There is another person. Who? The man who wants to buy the land from me. What's his name? Hawkins. Gerald F. Hawkins. Uh -huh. How come he knew? Well, because I told him. It slipped out. I mentioned that I needed money to pay a private investigator to help find my father's killer. He's the only other person you knew. All right, all right. Now, why do you say you killed your father? Oh, I said I was responsible. A couple of months ago, a man called on me. Are you El Ledoux, he asked. I told him I was. He said I was the owner of record of a piece of property in Nevada. I said he must mean my father. And he said, of course, Liebert Ledoux, your father must still be alive. He said, I sold him the property 30 years ago, and now I want to buy it back. Did he say why? Well, because it was worthless, and, and he didn't know it at the time, and he had come into some money, and he was trying to, well, to clear his name by making it up to people. He struck me as a very kindly gentleman at the time. Yeah, so this uh, Mr. Hawkins went to your father. Well, Dad must have turned him down. Mr. Hawkins came back to me and he said, Do you suppose I might be able to convince your father to sell? He'll never get another chance. And this way he'll get ten times his money back. Mm -hmm. And what did you say to Mr. Hawkins? Well, I see now. I signed my father's death warrant. Oh, come on. I told Mr. Hawkins, Once my dad decides that's the end of it, if the land were mine, I'd be glad to get rid of it. Don't you understand? He took that to mean that if Dad were out of the way... No, he'd have killed your father anyway. Taking his chances with you. Now, about this land. Well, I'll show you. Here. I, I have the papers in my pocketbook. Why didn't you show these to me before? Read the pamphlet. It goes back over 30 years. Paradise of the Devil. The name of the development. Yeah, I understand. Tell me, why didn't you want me to see this before? Well, because... Uh, I didn't want you to know my father could have been so... So, uh, naive? Yes. I, I was ashamed. Uh -huh. Paradise of the devil. At first sight, a desert inferno, but there's magic in this land. Deep underneath run the waters of life. Healthful, invigorating waters of youth. The paradise of the devil can become a spa to rival the great watering places of Europe. Stake your claim to unbelievable wealth, only one dollar per acre. Act now before it's all gone. And my father believed it. My father bought it. You know, in a way, the guy who hustled this was right. There's unbelievable wealth under that ground, and the swindler swindled himself out of it. Now he wants it back. He can't get it back now that I know. Now what are you going to do? What evidence do we have that Hawkins killed my father? I don't believe Hawkins actually killed him. Hawkins probably bought the murder. I still don't think we have any hard evidence at all. Then there's a possibility that Hawkins can go free. Well, it's always that possibility. I hired you to find my father's killer. And I did. To my satisfaction, what about the law? Oh, well, for that we have to dig. Very well. You dig. Right now, I can afford to have you dig forever. What do you want now, Snoop? 
For more information, Pete, you know, you could spend the rest of your life in jail. Unless... Yeah? Unless you help me get you out of here. Why should you care about me? Oh, I don't. I don't, Pete. And the world would be much better off if you remained in the clink, but you're part of something else. Now, do you know a guy named Hawkins? No. Well, have you ever heard of a guy named Hawkins? That's different. Yeah. Yeah, I heard of a guy named Hawkins. And what connection? Eh, he would need a strong arm from time to time. He ever hire you? Me? No. Nah. Why not? I'm too nice for him. He uses Attila the Hun. Attila the Hun? His real name is Richie. Where can I find Richie? I don't know. Try a couple of joints along the strip. Ah, Miss Ledoux, come in. Sit down. Glorious day. Must be a sign that... God's in his heaven and all's well with the world. Yes, quite. Now, as I promised you, I had this agreement drawn up, and if you sign it, you will receive the $10,000 for the property as soon as your father's will has been probated. Uh, read it over. You'll see it's in order. Yes, yes, I'm sure it is. I would like a few minor changes. Well, certainly. First? Well, are there many? I may need a fresh sheet of paper. Uh, that would be wise. Yeah, go right ahead. I, Gerald F. Hawkins, admit complicity in the murder of Liebert Ledoux and Sidney Grossman. Mr. Ledoux, what are you saying? I think you heard me. This was so I could swindle Mr. Ledoux's daughter out of some uranium-rich I property. really don't understand. I hope you see this gun I'm holding in my hand. Now, Miss Ledoux. Don't be foolish. You can't prove anything. Right as I tell you, or I'll kill you. You'll go to prison. I'll have avenged my father's death. Don't hang around, sister. Drop the rod. Richie. Yeah, 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 Richie. I come by for my pay, and I hear this little show going on. Come on, sister, drop it. <coughs> That's nice. We have to get rid of her. She knows. Yeah, yeah, we'll get rid of her. I'll make it clean. First, we get rid of you, pal. What? I just found out what's going on. All the uranium in the world. I understand it's like gold, oil, you know. Now it's mine. Yours? Why not? Do I have to be a bum all my life? I knock you off with her pistol. She did it because you're responsible for her old man's debt. No, Richie. You I... are, ain't you? You hired me. I took care of both of them for you. Ladue and Grossman. That's true, ain't it? Yes, but I, I paid you. I'll pay you more. Now I knock you off. Then I make her sign a bill of sale, turning the land over to me. Oh, never Don't did... say that, sister. Once I start to convince you, you'll beg me to let you sign. Then, filled with remorse, as it says in the books, you turn the gun on yourself. Richie, you're crazy. Sure, he's crazy. Hey, hey, <laughs> You're dead. Well, I told you he was crazy. You can see him alive. George. Mr. Cole. Everybody stand still, especially you, Richie. You oh, guys I'm got sorry. it all down on the tape recorder, Sarge? Yeah, we got it. But I don't understand how. It's all a mistake. It's a frame up. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. Let's wait for the jury to decide that. Sergeant, why did you take him in? You bet. Let's get moving. All right, boys, come out. Nice and cold. Oh, I did something stupid. I know it. What would you have done if I wasn't able to get a line on Richie? You know, you'd have been dead. But you did get a line on him. And I'm alive. You just don't think. I never did. And I won't start now. Besides, I don't have to think. Why should I? Why should you? Why should I when... When you can do all my thinking for me. She was always quiet. A hard girl for her co-workers to figure out. So, they thought she was a little bit off. That's because she was poor and single. Now that she's rich and married, she's merely a delightful eccentric. I never told you the world was fair. All I ever wanted you to believe at this stage of the program is that I will be right back. It's true. If you cast your bread upon the waters... You will find it again increased, but it will still be bread. On the other hand, there are some people who cast bread and recover cake. Who is to say that good-natured, gullible, trusting Bert Ledoux, who was cheated by everyone, wouldn't have had the last laugh after all? 
Who can say he didn't make a really smart investment 30 years ago? And actually, it's not that he wasn't smart. He just didn't have enough luck. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Bob Caliban, Catherine Byers, Peter Collins, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.